Hello, and welcome to Catholic Truths. Today we'll be discussing sacred tradition. Um, as a disclaimer, I probably look a little awful with my hair a bit disheveled and sweaty. I was trying to film this outside and I kept getting attacked by gnats, so this is why I look a little ugh today. Um, but today we'll be covering a very controversial topic um, when you get into the argument between Protestant versus um, Catholic. Tradition is a really heated thing. Um, this is tradition with a capital T versus tradition lower um, lowercase. So what is sacred tradition? It is the oral teachings of Jesus Christ handed down to the apostles who in turn handed it down to their disciples and so on. Therefore we get the bishops having it handed down to them. Um, the early church went almost 400 years without a written New Testament. So you question, well, how did they you know, know what the teachings were? Well, a lot of it was passed down orally, but the New Testament actually came from all these different letters the apostles had written in some gospels. So it wasn't until the Council of Carthage, which we've mentioned in the past, um, that they canonized it. Now, there are some other um, councils that reaffirm the canonization, but we always look at the Council of Carthage as being the big council that canonized it. Um, so, I mean, you had about 397-ish years where people were passing it around instead of just having a written document for everyone to see bound together. So, is sacred tradition biblical? Um, I have two scripture readings here for you. Acts 20, 35. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And from Jude 1, 9. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Neither of these um, topics are anywhere else in the Bible. It, they're mentioned in these verses, but it talks about things that people already knew about. Something that you would expect to find in Scripture, but it's not there. Meaning, this is a tradition that's been passed down. It's been orally taught. There are other verses. You can look this up in Google. It's very simple. Just type in, um, you know, sacred tradition in the Bible, and, and you'll find multiple sources. Um, now, sacred tradition does not refer to individual customs, such as um, the language is used at Mass, the kneeling or standing of um, the parishioners when they're receiving the Eucharist. Uh, these are doctrinal issues, and it's not sacred tradition. Um, the Vatican II, one of the more famous documents it released, was the De Dei Verbum. I'm probably mutilating that. Um, and this is what it says about sacred tradition. Hence, there exists a close connection and communication between sacred tradition and sacred scripture, for both of them, flowing from the same divine wellspring, in a certain way, merge into a unity and tend toward the same end. For sacred scripture is the word of God, inasmuch as it is consigned to writing under the inspiration of, this, of the divine spirit. To the successors of the apostles, sacred tradition hands on in its full purity God's word, which was entrusted to the apostles by Christ the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Thus, by the light of the spirit of truth, these successors come in their preaching, or can, I'm sorry, can in their preaching preserve the word of God faithfully, explain it, and make it more widely known. Consequently, it is not from sacred scripture alone that the church draws her certainty about everything which has been revealed. Therefore, both sacred tradition and sacred scripture are to be accepted and venerated with the same devotion and reverence. Um, now here is some scripture that regards sacred tradition that's a little more detailed, specifically mentioning script, um, tradition in the scriptures. We have 1 Corinthians 11.2. I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even as I have delivered them to you. 2 Thessalonians 2.15 So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter. There are many verses like that. Um, you can simply look these up. There's just a lot of them. Um, and you question... Why do we use tradition? Aside from what I've already mentioned that Vatican II stated, um, I've heard the theologian Steve Ray use this analogy. Um, 
authority within the church is like a three-legged stool. Without one of them, your stool is going to fall over. In fact, I just got a new tripod for my camera, and if I took out one of them, it would fall over, and trust me, it fell down a few times me trying to get it steady, so it will fall over. Um, the three legs of the stool are sacred scripture, which is the Bible, sacred tradition, which is what we've been discussing, and the magisterium. You ask, what is the magisterium? Uh, this is the teaching authority of the pope and bishops. Um, it ensures no erroneous doctrines or heresies will be taught, and um, we will most likely have a video about the magisterium later in the future and stuff. Now, I'll get into a lot of discussions about tradition, and I came from the Church of Christ. I have a video about my conversion and stuff, and one thing growing up that I always heard from the Church of Christ was that tradition was a bad thing, that you should not have tradition, that the Bible teaches you're not supposed to have tradition. Um, well, the Bible teaches you shouldn't have earthly traditions, but this isn't about earthly traditions. This is about divine traditions or sacred traditions. However, I found that funny because I may have told this story before. I honestly can't remember, but I've before gone up to people and had these discussions, and they're members of Church of Christ, and I'm able to tell them, you don't have traditions, right? And they say, oh, no, 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 traditions are bad. And I say, okay. So I say, I'm going to take a gander here, but when you go into your church service, your preacher's up front shaking hands as everybody walks in. You go in and you sing a song, a hymn, and have a prayer. Am I right? And they're like, oh, yeah. And, I'm like, and you're standing. Mm -hmm. So then after this, you will sit down. After the prayer, you'll sit down and sing two or three more songs or hymns. All right? Correct. Okay. Then your preacher will come up. And he will give a sermon that's anywhere between 15 minutes and 45 minutes. But when you get to the 45-minute mark, people start getting agitated because they want out, correct? You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. After this, then, you will you may have a prayer or a song, hymn. I keep saying song, hymn. Uh, just ignore that. But you'll do that, and then you'll have specific hymn that you sing for the Lord's Supper. And then you'll have a prayer, and they'll hand out the bread. And then you'll have another prayer, and you'll hand out the wine or um, grape juice, new wine. And then um, another prayer, and you'll um, hand out the bins to put your money in, you know. And then you'll have another song or two, then announcements, if the announcements weren't at the very beginning of the service. But you'll have announcements, and then you'll have one more song and a closing prayer. And then everyone will hur hurry out, talking with each other, and there'll be the preacher will be back at the door shaking everyone's hand, talking with them, and you may even have a potluck. And he's like, oh my gosh, how'd you know that? And I said, because every Church of Christ does it in some form or fashion. It is a tradition among the Church of Christ, and many other churches that say they don't have traditions, they're almost identical when it comes to it. So um, it is foolish, really, to say that you don't have any traditions in your church when it's very evident you do. Um, so it's just pay attention before you say certain things. That's, I guess, the lesson learned there. Um, so that's all about sacred tradition. As I said, this is just a brief little video and stuff. Um, if you have questions, comments, you know, just put them down below. And I want to say next week we're going to be discussing the Pope. That's another big topic, right? The Pope, you know. Um, so thank you for watching. And I'm sorry, I'm using my cue cards again. I'm hoping to get a lot better with this. But um, thank you for watching. Please ask that you would like this video and subscribe so you can see future videos. It'll help. Um, the more subscribers and likes I get, the more this video will pop up for people when they're looking for actual information. Um, also, we just started a Twitter account. Um, so I'd like you to follow me on, at Twitter at Catholic underscore truths dot com. I'll have that in the description below. Um, also, be sure to visit our community on Amino, which is called Catholics. You can type it in, or you can even click the link in the description below as well. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next week. God bless.